long after I'm gone, the story will be told. This man has incredible weight on his shoulders right now. Conor McGregor, mm -hmm. always a pleasure to see you, sir. Uh, and I suppose I'm wondering, was there a certain point along this journey where you realised this is kind of the moment? I, I had an opportunity about two and a half years ago to talk to The Rock, mm -hmm. just before the Josie Aldo fight that ended mm -hmm. up in the Chad Mendes mm -hmm. fight. The film was fine, we were talking about a film of his, it was fine. Mm. When I got to the question about you, and yeah. the question about the UFC in that fight, The yeah. Rock lit up. Mm. Was there a moment for you where you were like, you know, this is something special, this has gone somewhere I, else? I actually, I actually remember that interview, and thank you for bringing it up. The, the Rock has been a, a diehard fan of, of mixed martial arts and all combat sport, and he supported me and he supported the UFC uh, along my journey. So, I mean, to see all these mega stars come in and, and, and know who I am and, and to show their support, it, it, it's breathtaking. As far as like a moment, it's kind of hard to pinpoint. There's been so many moments now, I mean, even this movie, this movie that's coming out, it's like, there's so many moments in it, but it, that, even looking at it, it, it feels like that was way back. Like, it feels like another time. There's been so many more moments. Again, it's, it's, it's insane. It really is insane. So I, I'm, just, I'm just blessed. I'm, I'm living a blessed life, and, and that's it. I just keep going and, and keep my fingers crossed that everyone, everything keeps going as is. I know you were kind of <coughs> at that level. You are probably, I would say, I said in a review to the film, you are probably where David Beckham was maybe 10, 15 years ago. You're that level of fame now. I right. know something you liked doing back yeah. in the day was you would just walk down Grafton Street kind of window shop, yeah, maybe yeah, run and yeah. have a look oh, at the yeah, clothes. Yeah. Is that something that you missed that anonymity you've been able to? Yeah, I, I can't remember it. I cannot, I, 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 rem I remember when it first started happening, first it'd be like, someone would suss me and say, can I have a picture? I'd be like, yeah, and i give them a picture, a face off, a sign that fucking jocks. <laughs> i do the whole bleeding lot. And then as I start getting a million people start running to the, t towards me, and then it start getting a little, a, li a little heavy, but I just, I cannot remember what it's like to roll down somewhere and not be, be, be noticed, so I just embrace it. As far as like walking down Grafton Street, I still walk down Grafton Street, I still roll around, so. Um, again, it's, it's something that I'm just blessed. I, you can, you see like people in, in the public eye, they can be, they can complain about it, but I mean, this is not, that's not a real problem that you can't go yeah. somewhere and not be noticed. There's, people have real problems, you don't, the neck of some people to, to complain about something like that. So I'm just, I'm just grateful and blessed and, and happy to be in the position I'm in. D David Beckham, you mentioned, funny, I was talking to David Beckham. He, he messages me on Instagram every now and again. He was at the Ultimate Fighting Championship Performance Institute where I prepared for the Floyd fight. And the ring was there, the, the ring that I trained in, and he put up a post and, and, and tagged me in it. And we were talking about it, and he was like, I mean, it makes me want to get into fighting. I was like, Say no more, David, we can make that happen. You know we can make that happen if you want. So we had a little laugh about it, but D David Beckham is an OG, an OG of the whole, the whole picture, I suppose, from a fashion standpoint, which I've capitalized on and I'm continuing to capitalize on. And then obviously from a sporting standpoint, his was football, mine's fighting, but David Beckham is an OG and I have much respect for him and, and the empire he has built for himself. And in terms of the UFC and in terms of UFC fighters, <coughs> how much attention are you paying because to these guys and, and the stuff that these guys are coming out with? Because you're the money fight, everybody kind of knows you're mm. the money fight, so mm. everybody's going to call you out. Yeah. You, are you paying attention to some of them, all of them? Man, I've just... got everyone clawing. I, I, I've got everyone clawing at me, trying to get, trying to get at me. So, and that's from multiple sports, multiple organisations, multiple everything. So, I just, it's, it's been like that. It's been like that for a long, long time. I feel so. It's just another day for me. I know there are many contenders in the UFC. There are many boxing contenders as well. What, what interests me is, is, is certainly a UFC bout, certainly a defense of my lightweight title. There is a, a fighter with the interim, featherweight, or the interim lightweight uh, belt. I feel that will be next. We'll see how negotiations go. The, the Diaz trilogy is also there. I can defend my belt against uh, 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 Nate. Maybe we can persuade uh, one of these boxing opponents to step into the octagon or, or, or there's also boxing bouts as well so um, there's so many options I feel the legitimate to legitimize the belt if there's an interim champion I'm the unified champion I feel that will be next we are currently uh, in contract negotiations and we'll see where it goes you obviously had a fantastic relationship with Lorenzo and mm -hmm. still have a fantastic relationship with Dana White and we mm -hmm. see him in the documentary 
literally giving you that news about Josie Aldo yeah. and, and the rib and stuff. Yeah. How has the relationship with Dana White evolved over time? Because now you're, you're very much part of the company, mm. not just a fighter. Oh, we're company. business partners and, 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 and we're friends, L lifelong friends. He is, an, he is a legend of the fight game. I mean, what, Dave, what Dana's done and what Lorenzo's done, Lorenzo is like uh, a mentor to me and still is. I still converse with Lorenzo daily. We were discussing a casino the other day. I'm trying to get a casino in Las Vegas and just bounce in on that one. So we were discussing that and we were going back and forward. So Lorenzo's a mentor to me and, and, and I take his opinion and, uh, very, very uh, seriously and very, very highly. And I always reach out to him on any venture that I get involved in or I'm about to get involved in and, 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 and get his opinion. And then Dana is like, like a brother to me. We're like, we're like, we're like f just lifelong friends. So I'm very, very, um, very blessed to have, have met them too and, and to, Climbed up the ranks with them too, and long may I continue. And obviously, John Cavan is your main coach, on Roddy is your striking coach, mm -hmm. and those roles are kind of switched for the Mayweather fight a little bit. Yeah. How was that dynamic, and, and how important are those two guys to you? They've been there since the start, along with Artem and all these other guys. <laughs> and, and you know what? This film brought me back because, like I said, there's been so many moments, and, and although that film wasn't that long ago, it feels like it could, the world I'm in now is completely different than the world I was in then. So it's like. Um, this film was I was able to go back and like look at who was really there. Who was there from the beginning? Like you said, Coach John Cavanaugh has been there from the very beginning. Coach Owen Roddy has been there. Myself and Roddy were training partners and sparring partners originally. Then he came in uh, uh, as more of a striking coach. And um, as far as the switch that happened for the for the Mayweather fight, that it just happened naturally. We we set sparring up, and and every day when the sparring would happen, Roddy would stand in the ring and John would be outside the ring. So. That was the way we went into sparring, so we just kept it that way for the fight. So it, it worked out perfect. So I'm, I'm very happy with it. And again, very, very blessed to, to know them, to, these two men. Two highly skilled men in, in the game of unarmed combat. So I'm very, very blessed. And the, I think the last time I, speak, I was speaking, she was on stage at the Mansion House. Uh, with John Cavan and the retirement mm. thing had just come out. You'd kind of post it on Facebook, right. you're yeah. going to think about it, and then you, and then you just kind of come out yeah. and said whatever you were going to say. Are, are you used to that kind of everything you say and every single thing, doing a massive focus on it and reverberating Not, around the yeah, world? I mean, it's a difficult balance. I mean, I still put my foot in it a few times, so I'm still kind of trying to figure that one out, but it is what it is. It's, it comes with the territory. I just have to accept it and embrace it. And like I was saying on the Late Late Show today, it's like it's something that I can either let it swallow me and... and and shy away from it, or I can eat it myself and stand tall and put my chest out and roll with it. And I choose to do th the latter there and just roll with it, and, 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 and that's it, so. So we might have the Tony Ferguson fight next, that's what it's looking like next. In mm -hmm. terms of post-MMA career, Shane Black offered you a role in Predators. Shane Black created, you know, Lethal Weapon, mm -hmm. great director, yeah. nice guys, mm -hmm. kiss, kiss, bang, bang. Mm -hmm. uh, what was the thinking behind saying no to that? Because that seemed like it would've been a great role for you, a great director. You know, they came, I was shooting that Pegasus thing, the commercial thing, which was, which was three days, three days on for like 10 hours a day, and then I'm gone. Back to focus on what I can focus on, focus on preparing for, for, for combat and focus on building the entities that I'm involved in. It took very little of my time. The Predator one, they wanted me, they came in, they met me face to face, it was a big project, we shook hands, it was, it was great that they came out to meet me and, and I was excited about it, but it was just, it was too much time. And, and it was at a time where, and not that I have much more time now, but it was at a time where there was fight, I still hadn't won the, 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 the lightweight belt yet. And there was, there was many things that I needed to accomplish. Um, so it just didn't come to fruition. So these offers come to me all the time and I'm always, I'm always trying to feel what's right and what's not. And I, I, sometimes I've, I've accepted things and then when it comes down to it, it's like, I can't do, I, you know what I mean? So that, that's, on my, that's, on, that's on me. I should not accept things that I'm, I cannot do. So I'm getting a little bit better at that now. And if someone comes to me with something, I, I'll say yes, or I'll say no, or I'll say yes. So that's where we're at. But if you've got a guy like that coming to you, offering you big roles in movies, mm. respected director, is that a direction you see yourself going down? Like Arnold Schwarzenegger is obviously yeah. the original Predator. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Would have just been yeah, a nice yeah, thing know, to do. I know, I know, I know, yeah. I don't know, I look, I don't know where, I don't know. We'll see what happens. I'm not gonna say no, because right? there's still, I'm still involved in the fight business. I've taken, if you look at the grand scheme of, of, of my fighting career, I've taken very little damage. I've, I've, I've never been dropped, I've, ne I've been wobbled once. I wasn't even wobbled in the, in, in, in the Mayweather fight. I was fatigued and, and stopped through that. I was wobbled once in the Diaz one fight, not once in the Diaz two fight. So I'm, as far as damage taken, I'm still very young, so 
I feel I'll keep going in the fight game and see where, where, where it's at. Right now I have this uh, movie coming out, which is uh, obviously a documentary style, but I'm executive producer on the project, so it's, it's there for me to, to, um, to explore. We'll see. It's something that, they, again, they're clawing at me to get in, so we'll see what happens. Before I let you go, final question. Where do you think Irish MMA is going? Post Conor McGregor, post all the guys and the Cotton Pendrons and the Paddy Hoolahan mm. down the line. Where do you think Irish MMA will be in five or ten years' time? I, I, I think I think Irish fighting period. We we will always be involved in it, and we will always have our have a footprint in the fight game. Obviously, I climbed it to another level and brought it to to a different. Uh, a different level altogether, but it's 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 going to continue to rise. Uh, what's the what's the the saying? A high tide raises all ships, which is what Artem's opponent shouted out at me from from the cage, and 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 it's true. So there's many great great fighters, obviously in in our stable in SPG, obviously in the stable you train at with, with own Roddy SPG Charlestown, the entire SPG branch. So. The fight, Irish fighting is, is, is in a great position and I'm very proud to have a, a small part to play in that. Conor McGregor, always a pleasure. Thank you, sir.